Hi, my name is Jamie. I am a resident of Kansas City. Um, I have a pre-existing condition. When I was 23, I contracted the flu, uh, which I found out a month later uh, did uh, irreversible damage to my heart, uh, causing me to have a congestive heart failure. Um, after, after being diagnosed with the congestive heart failure, uh, th that first year after being diagnosed, I was my doctors were wanting me to be transplanted, uh, but at the time I was unable to be transplanted due to uh, my size, uh, which qualified me from being listed. I contracted pneumonia, and following that stint in the hospital, um, after checking in with my cardiologist, he would, wanted me to go in for a second heart transplant evaluation. And at that time of the evaluation, he gave me less than six months to live without being transplanted. We we started the application process for for Medicaid, and uh, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork, and uh, and a even after I went home um, with this uh, Milrinone pump hooked up to me now, I had a lot of back and forth uh, with uh, Medicaid, tons and tons of paperwork. They requested a lot of documents, and I had to. Uh, everything that they wanted had a timeline. We need this paperwork by then. Then they send me new paperwork. Now we need this. We need you to fill this out. Then we need this along with the bank statements, medical statements, letters from your doctor. They 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 wanted everything, and I complied with it. Another couple of weeks goes by, and I get a letter from Medicaid, and it's a denial letter saying that my application has been denied, and there was no clear answer to why it was. It was a very vague and distant reason in which they gave um, and especially after me complying while I was sick and uh, you know walking around with hooked up to this pump all day every day uh, uh, it was I, I tried my best to, to seem cool and collected about the whole situation but I'm like I, I knew it wasn't the end for me but I was I, I was starting to get concerned about it my cardiologist uh, Dr. Cal he reached out to Senator McCaskill's office uh, um, after we received the denial letter, and just a, and I would say about a, six to seven days later, a representative from uh, D.C. called me and uh, stated that she had uh, been contacted by Senator McCaskill's office and that they were going to overturn my denial and approve me, and that it wouldn't go into effect the following day, but. Um, that they were going to, they were going to approve my my case because uh, they were contacted by Senator McCaskill's office. So she played a vital part in me still being here to this day, in, in which me and my family, wife and kids are dearly grateful for. After returning to the workforce and now having insurance through my employer that significantly helps me with the cost of my medications which I have to be on for the rest of my life um, this lawsuit could greatly impact me and my family because the out-of-pocket expenses for this medication without insurance would be an amount that we would not be able to afford which in turn means that I would not continue to be here because uh, they are crucial to my health and to continue having no no rejection the immunosuppressants is one of out of all the medication I'm on, it's one of the most vital uh, medications that I'm on uh, in order for me to continue to be healthy um, are the immunosuppressants and if this law passes uh, I would no longer be able to afford it and um, for, I'm not in a position where I would have help for to pay it. It's a very uh, it's a very high amount. It's a, it's a it's a amount that unfortunately I don't have the support system around me that we would be able to afford that medication and that cost monthly so without it, I basically I would I would die without my medications. And to after the fight that I fought for all these years, it would it would be a a, a very uh, it would be a waste. 